Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour. I'm your host, Carl Sussman. Remember, you can always call in with your questions at 559-656-0317. If you have immediate help that you need, you can also dial pound 250 on your cell phone. Be connected to someone that can help you right away. You can also send your questions in to questions at insurancehour.com. Now, we are going to be talking about something now, so just take a deep breath. Don't get upset. We're going to talk about what's fair and what's not fair when it comes to insurance policies. Now, this is going to be a fun one. Some people live in an area, and I'm going to leave out the expression choose to live because everyone chooses to live somewhere. Mm -hmm. Some people live in an area that is simply a higher risk for fire than others might. Just like some people might live in an area that's closer to the San Andreas Fault and their earthquake insurance opportunities to purchase might be more expensive or, or less available. You, before the break, were talking about how you've had to evacuate your own, yourself from your mm -hmm. own home because of where you live. What do you tell the average person that is unhappy that they are paying more for insurance because they are in an area that might be a higher risk than an area that is, say, in the middle of the city? Well, one of the things I think would be important to try to emphasize is what, instead of using the word fair, what is reasonable, right? What is reasonable is also something that needs to be explained. And if uh, they can explain the reason why these, these rates are where they are, then that is meeting the definition, the definition of reasonable. Um, because it's hard to argue that any rate is fair, right? I mean, you, you can argue both sides of that all day long. But what needs to happen is we need to have a reasonable rate based on risk. Uh, and those risks need to be very identifiable and reasonable. Um, that sounds simple, but uh, it starts to get a little murky depending on uh, certain residential circumstances. The district I represent has more rural uh, circumstances than it does urban. I have very little, I have suburban, but I don't have any real urban uh, areas. And so it seems like right now the rates for some of these rural areas, in my opinion, are not reasonable. Are they fair? Depends on who you talk to, right? But uh, the reasonableness is, has to do with the ability to pay it. Right. And so those are all factors that are really hard to uh, align, but we've got to get there. We've got to get there because the public deserves that and the institution deserves it. Do you think that, again, the average person that lives in one of those areas feels, I hate, I don't want to use the word entitled because that's not what I mean. Do you think that they feel that there should be a way for them to not have to spend more money because they're living in an area that is a higher risk. I'll give you an example. I was talking to someone who said that they think everyone should be paying close to the same amount of insurance regardless of where they are. And her justification was to say that, well, you know, I live in Big Bear and it's beautiful and you will come to Big Bear to visit. So I'm subsidizing you at some point when you want to come here for vacation, just like you're subsidizing me if I want to come to the city and, you know, hang out in the middle of the crowds and, and, and see movies and go to the theater and things like that. Do you think that there's a way where there's a good way, let me put it that way, okay. where people can be comfortable that there are certain areas that, not forget reasonable, forget fair, that simply are actuarially more expensive and the premiums are going to reflect that? I don't know how you get away with not doing that. It, 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 it's one of the realities that exists. But what I do hope, and, and I have to have hope that that, that reasonableness can actually be reached. Um, but there is gonna be disparities, right? It's just like uh, any, any degree of auto insurance depends on, your, your rates depend on the accident picture that happens in the region where you live and the amount of miles that you drive and all those, those are real factors. And some of the people that live in rural areas have the benefit of lower traffic auto insurance rates uh, when you live in an urban atmosphere where there's a lot more vehicle traffic and a lot more uh, likelihood of being ran into, there's going to be a, a higher rate to pay. And 
when you're more prone to these catastrophic fires, there's probably going to have to be uh, consideration there. And so these are realities that can't be ignored. And maybe there's some mitigating things that we can do to try to soften them and make it what I call reasonable. Right. And um, I'm hoping we can get there. But we need to start being honest, first of all, and know that there's going to be disparities. I think that's a fascinating point because from what I hear, and I, I deal in all throughout California, but from people that are in areas that are higher risk for fire, all they talk about is the disadvantage from their insurance standpoint. You brought up a great point with auto insurance. You're absolutely right. When people will try and say, oh, I live in this zip code. I live at this address, right? And it's mm -hmm. their grandmother's address, right? But they pick that because the auto insurance is less there, right? You can't do that, but people will try sometimes. Mm -hmm. But you're 100% right. It works both ways, right? It might be more expensive for property insurance, but it absolutely is likely to be less expensive for the auto insurance. And that's, that is an actual fact. And, and like you said, being honest about that and realizing that maybe it's not all so bad. It's a little bit of balancing the scale, if you will. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think those are important considerations because insurance people want to make a profit, but they also want to be able to just exist. And I think because of the catastrophic circumstances that existed over the last couple of years, um, it devastated many, many, many communities. I mean, we had an entire city go up in flames. That has never happened before. And so that scares because those claims were probably pretty, uh, pretty healthy. Well, they're, they're called 100-year events, and they're priced in by most insurance companies. And shockingly, they're supposed to happen every 100 years or so. And in the last decade, we've seen seven events like that happen countrywide. So Clearly, something has to be adjusted somewhere. I want to talk a little bit about, uh, there's a federal bill that Adam Schiff threw out to, I, I say threw out, not in the way, not into the trash, but tossed out to the public. Okay. And it's pending, but you don't hear anything about it. Most people have never heard about it. And uh, every time I bring it up, people look at me and they tilt their head and they say, what? What are you talking about? I might and, be joining them. Which is phenomenal, which is, which, which, is, which is the best thing because this is something that we're, we may have to face at some point. So let's take a quick break. And when we come back, I want to talk briefly about the shift bill on the federal level and what your thoughts of it are. And you have no chance to prepare. So there you go. It's all good. We'll get it right off the cuff. Okay. We'll be right back. Okay. Thanks for watching. If you found this useful, please be sure to like and subscribe for more content. And don't forget, click here to watch the next video.